On June 3rd, 2016, the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, passed away at the age of 74. He was a three-time world heavyweight champion and international humanitarian who transcended race. If you want to be a terrified white person about it. I'm saying you're talking about me about some draft and all of you white boys are breaking your neck to get to Switzerland and Canada and London. I'm not going to help nobody get something my Negroes don't have. If I'm going to die, I'll die now right here fighting you. If I'm going to die, you my enemy. My enemy is the white people, not Viet Cong's or Chinese or Japanese. Uh, yeah, Muhammad Ali was a proud, revolutionary black Muslim in America who in 1967 defied the draft in protest of the Vietnam War, which got him arrested and then kicked out of boxing for three years in his prime. He called for $25 billion of reparations to build homes for black people in the South, and it was declassified in 2013 that the NSA frickin' wiretapped his conversations. Not cool, NSA. You my opposer when I'm on freedom. You my opposer when I'm on justice. You my opposer when I'm on equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs, and you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. Whoa. Over time, this guy's legacy is definitely going to continue to be whitewashed, just like MLK's erratically anti-Vietnam and Nelson Mandela's insisted that Israel was an apartheid state. So I'm gonna give y'all some of the Muhammad Ali juice a before they disappear. Lawrence Ross of The Root says, the thing most people will miss is how Ali's voice, a bold black and Muslim voice that spoke eloquently for the aspirations of oppressed peoples in America and throughout the world, was reviled by most of white America at its height and rendered nearly mute as Parkinson's disease overtook his neurological functions. As his physical voice disappeared, Ali gradually moved from being a complex human being to a safe idea. Yep, we're turning Muhammad Ali into a safe idea. Like becoming a certified public accountant instead of a tap dancer. Anyway, we're all familiar with quotes like this. On the last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Badass, right? But aren't lesser known quotes like this one even more badass? I will not go 10,000 miles from here to help murder and kill another poor people simply to continue the domination of white slave masters over the darker people of the earth. Right? Plus, in 1990, despite the public attacks of George H.W. Bush, Muhammad Ali went to Iraq after Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait because he wanted to secure the release of 15 hostages that Saddam captured and planned on using as human shields. Human shields, by far the most insensitive type of shields. The Bush White House disapproved of Ali's trip, fearing Saddam would use it as a propaganda tool. The images of Ali and the dictator led to a more cynical reaction from some in the media. They questioned Ali's motives, implying he'd taken the meeting to boost his own profile. The accusation did not reign true. He wanted to get everybody that was left there, Americans, released. And he did it. He brought all of the hostages home. He saved the lives of those people just six weeks before Operation Desert Storm began. Cut to 15 years later, and you've got this ass clown awarding him the Presidential Medal of Freedom while only mentioning his boxing accomplishments. This is a man who once fought more than 10 rounds with a fractured jaw. And he fought to, com to complete exhaustion and victory in that legendary clash of greats in Manila. The real mystery, I guess, is how he stayed so pretty. <laughs> Probably had to do with his beautiful soul. <laughs> Get fucked. In conclusion, Muhammad Ali floated like a butterfly and stung like a bee. But let's never forget, he also was a revolutionary. <laughs>